If you trace back your genetic family line a few billion years, it doesn't only join with mine, it joins with those of all known animals and plants and bacteria to one organism, LUCA, the last universal common ancestor. Scientists believe that every living thing on Earth descends from LUCA. It's just taking us about 4 billion years to learn speaking English. But a recent study delivered quite a surprise. It's found that LUCA was much more complex than previously thought, and that raises a lot of questions about the origin of life. Let's have a look. LUCA is a hypothesis, but a well-motivated one. It's based on the observation that all living beings on Earth are built up in similar ways. They all have similar molecular and cellular features, such as the genetic code, ribosomes, and metabolic pathways like the way we generate energy from sugar. And to the extent that we can test this with fossils, it's also the case well back in time. Scientists think that LUCA was not the origin of life itself. There were likely simpler self-reproducing structures before that, though it somewhat depends on what you mean by life. If life means arguing about the Oxford comma, I don't think Luca was quite there yet. But just exactly what sort of organism Luca was, no one really knew. This is where the new study comes in. These researchers did a sophisticated genomic analysis of pretty much everything they could get their hands on to identify the genes which all known organisms have in common and which therefore likely originated in Luca. They found a whopping 2,657 of them, much more than any previous study. Are we we mostly know what these genes are good for because we know what proteins they synthesize. The genes seem to indicate that LUCA was good at using hydrogen gas as an energy source. This is very interesting because it tells us something about the environment in which LUCA must have lived. Hydrogen gas can be created near hydrothermal vents, which are one of the suspected places for life to have emerged. A hydrothermal vent is a place on the seafloor where water that has been warmed from geothermal heat bubbles up. The warm water can react with some of the minerals in the rocks, which creates hydrogen gas. Luca might have lived there. This fits very well with what researchers have been speculating about the origin of life already, but much more interesting is the part that doesn't fit. That part had it that when Luca lived about 4.2 billion years ago, organisms were incredibly basic. But this is not what the new study found. Even though this study might have missed some genes, it gives us a minimal set of what LUCA must have contained. They estimate LUCA's genome size to be about 2.75 million base pairs of DNA. Just for comparison, human DNA has a little over 3 billion base pairs and onions about 13 billion. Yes, that's right, onions. Those smug vegetables have more genes than we do. If you've ever cried cutting one, maybe they deserved it. The fact that the genome size doesn't predict an organism's complexity is one of the big open problems in genetics. So if you're getting tired of reinventing quantum mechanics, maybe give this one a try. With all these genes that the researchers have identified for LUCA, they were able to generate sort of a flowchart of its metabolic pathways, and it's way more complex than anyone thought. You see it in this figure. Yes, that looks like an old Windows screensaver had a baby with biochemistry, but maybe Bill Gates knows something we don't. They write in the paper, the result is a picture of a cellular organism that was prokaryote grade rather than progenotic and that probably existed as a component of an ecosystem. This basically means it's more complex than they thought. Prokaryotes are organisms that still live today, for example, many types of bacteria like E. coli. They're typically 1 to 10 micrometers in size and have a cell wall, but no nucleus that holds the DNA. Instead, the DNA floats freely on the inside. The reason this is relevant is that we know roughly when Luca existed and there wasn't a 
lot of time for it to grow to that complexity, because just half a billion years earlier, Earth was quite literally a hot mess. So this study means that either life can form much easier and faster than we thought, or it was seeded by some sample from outer space. The former fits together well with another study that I talked about in an earlier video, which argued that if you have sufficiently many molecules, you'll pretty much inevitably get autocatalytic cycles that are molecular reactions that sustain themselves and that are believed to be a precursor to self-reproduction, which itself is a precursor to life. I find this incredibly interesting because it supports my confirmation bias that extraterrestrial life isn't rare but quite common. Or life on Earth actually came from elsewhere and now the aliens are sitting there thinking, we sent them our best microbe and all we got was this lousy YouTube video. We talk a lot about the origin of life, but an underappreciated problem is the origin of news. Have you noticed that news in different outlets often sound pretty much the same? I've often wished there was a way to collect news on the same topic in one place and compare them. And there is a platform where you can do exactly this. It's called Ground News and they currently have a special offer. Ground News is a news platform that collects and summarizes news which has been published all over the world. Not only do they collect all articles on the same story in one place and give you a quick summary, they also give you a lot of extra information that you don't find in the standard media. Take for example this recent story about a study that found that DEI training actually increases bias. Ground News will collect all articles about this and will tell you right away that this hasn't been covered by the political left. Like, not at all. This is very interesting, don't you think? You also get a factuality rating for each news item and it tells you whom the media outlets are owned by and where the news has appeared. Ground News also has this great feature called Blind Spot. This tells you which news has been almost exclusively covered only by one side of the political spectrum. Spectrum. And Ground News currently has a special offer, which is a 50% discount on the Vantage plan, which gives you access to all their features. All you need to do is use our link ground.news Sabine or use the QR code so they'll know I sent you. This is a limited time offer, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.